Um, 10,000 messages in six months sounds overwhelming. Yeah, it was a lot. So you, you get a little email every week that tells you how many messages your team sent. Oh, wow. Is it, it is it really a better alternative to email at that point? Well, if you th what I think is better about it is the way that students actually use it, which is to say, um, oh, there's this message on the answering machine and the parent wants to know X, Y, Z, but I'm not sure what to say. And then you can respond and then they can ask. And so it's much more like a conversation. Okay. And so each one of those sentences ends up being a message where in an email you might have written, oh, here are all the things that happened today that I was wondering about. And then I'm going to write back, well, here are my answers to the five things that you asked. And so I think the same, maybe more information is in Slack just because the students are more willing to ask the questions and also you get a lot of the clarification, like, did you mean I should look here or I should look there? Or if it says this, then what do I do? And so that, even though it's a lot of information, the number of messages, each message itself, is not a lot of information by itself. So it ends up being more manageable than it sounds like with 10,000 messages in a semester. So anyone have a, yeah? So I'm just thinking, I'm pulling on my librarian background. Are the students? good at the hashtags, do you have to do a lot of training about saying, this is what the channel, this is what the channel is, this is how these hashtags match up, and yes. then in the end, it's on them to distinguish kind of where they go. So there is a little bit of that hashtags don't work the way that students oh. inst instinctively think that they do, so the way that they work, let me show, if I can find this an example, because this is the way we ask our students to use it. So in end of shift, we ask you to say, let's see if anybody actually did it right. We don't have as much going on yet because we just started. Oh, and then that's a new one. Let me look back here. Oops, and then I just went to the wrong one. Okay, so here's an example where this student says, Today I worked on this study doing this task, and then I did this task in this study. And so they tag those channels there. And what that does is it just gives you a link to that channel. Oh, okay. So does it And then they're supposed to. I, and now we need to go back far enough here. So this is that same day. This is that student who said she worked in this on this project. And so here's the conversation she had with the supervisor about what she was working on. And so the tagging the channel is just a shortcut. And a lot of the RAs think that it means that the message gets copied there, and it doesn't. So that was the, one of the things that we have to train is that we want your end of shift to say, you know, I worked on project X and project Y. And then you also have to go to Project X and put in all the detail. So this was a way that it makes more messages, but it compartmentalizes the information in, in the way that we wanted it. And then my second question is, um, you know, because you're you're working with uh, preschoolers and underagers and it's training and having to follow those with protocol, um, how does it, it? I'm sure it's safe for HIPAA and all those other yeah. types of. Yeah, so we don't put any information about our participants in here. So every participant has a five-digit ID mm -hmm. that is the link to their name in a different place. Yeah. And so when we talk about, if, you know, a kid's coming in tomorrow, it's kid, you know, X, Y, Z, 1, 2. And then that, the sensitive information doesn't get stored in here at all, but it's referring to a source that we all share yep. where we can keep that. So that's another thing we have to train on is the kind of information you can and cannot <laughs> put in here. Yeah. So first, a follow-up question to how are, uh, this is just functional, how are hashtags entered? Like, do you have some longer hashtags you have to write? Yeah, study it, underscore it, sim it suggests when you start typing. So when I put study, it gives me a method, oh, okay. a menu of all the ones that I can do. And the same with name. So you tag a person. And um, related to the tagging a person, actually, um, you can set up, you can customize your notifications across every channel. So you can say, notify me every time my name is written, and also notify me in uh, admin attention. So like admin attention means that the grad students and I get notified every time anything is posted in there, even if the student forgets to tag us. But then, you know, only one student is supervising, one grad student's in charge of this study. So she's the only one who needs to be notified for that channel. So we set the notifications that way. So when you go to tag a person or a channel, um, Slack makes the suggestion based on the channels that you have. So the admin attention is the one that you can that you use for the hey, I'm not to make it in. Yeah. Those are kind of the way that you get around the this no way to alert the Yes, and so the issue that we had is that usually someone will say, I can't come next Friday, 
And then I have to talk with the grad students about, can somebody actually cover for this? What do we need to do? Do we need to take the time off the calendar? And by the time that conversation happens, we've forgotten that we need to reply to the student. Or we have, there's also um, private versus public channels. So this little um, lock icon means that that's a private channel. So a public channel, anybody who's in your team can read what's in that channel, but they have to join the channel to post. In the private channels, nobody sees that they even exist unless you invite them. So admin only is where the five of us talk about all the students in the lab in a way that we wouldn't necessarily want them to be able to see. So admin attention means that's where students communicate directly with us, and admin only means that's where we communicate with each other. And so if you have some kind of you know, structure in the group that you're working with, where you have some people who need to know some information, and nobody else will ever need to know it, then using the private channel makes it such that it doesn't clutter up someone else's list of channels. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, a couple more questions. Uh, you said you, you said that the students weren't using email. I mean, I see the, there's definitely bad news over email here. But yeah. You said students weren't using email because they just don't know what email about. It, email, yeah. One the reason they go to their email to check this. What about Slack? Is this something that they're already using already? And is this something that they're only going into Slack because you told them to? Nobody else was using it before. Um, and so what we did is we installed the desktop client on all of our computers in the lab. And when you log into the computer, it automatically logs you into Slack. And then you get notifications of what you missed when you were gone. So it's in your tray, you know, it pops up and says, this is what happened since you were gone. And then most of the students also put the app on their phone. Because um, that's another thing that's nice. So when we're, we have a family coming in to participate, we have to go wait and watch them in the parking lot. And the students always have their phone with them, but they wouldn't, they don't necessarily have an email on their phone, which surprises me, but they don't always use their email on their phone, not their whisk email anyway. Um, and so now if a student's down waiting, and let's say the parent calls the lab and says, oh, I'm running 10 minutes late, you can send a message through Slack telling them the parent just called, they're going to be 10 minutes late, and then they know. So previously, we had been using text messaging to do that, so just the students are very happy to text. But then it was hard to keep track of everybody's phone number, and someone would text me and not say who they were. I'm like, I don't know what this phone number is. And someone just said, hey, what should I be doing right now? And I have no idea who's talking to me. <laughs> so the big advantage is it just adds a layer of convenience over email, not so much that it's something that students would use otherwise. Right, yeah. So I have yet to come across a, an undergrad who use it. Now, some of my grad students use it in other contexts. Um, so other people in my department use it for other purposes. And were there any other differences between the freemium version and the paid version? Besides the ones you've mentioned already, besides so, the soaring the text. No. Yeah, the only one that I've come across that felt like it might be a problem is that 10,000 okay. message mm -hmm. threshold. Otherwise, I don't even remember what the differences are. Um, might have something to do with the level of integrations. There, there probably is a limit on the number of members that I just haven't hit yet. Sure. Um, so maybe for a big class, it wouldn't be feasible. But um, yeah, otherwise, I don't. There's nothing that comes to mind of what the limitations were. And then the last question here. Um, you were, oh, you just forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, what was that? More coffee. Yeah, definitely more coffee. Uh, I'll, I'll get back. Oh, no, do you legal hat, put your legal hat on, uh, and I'm going to hold you to every word you say, uh, or not. Yeah. But um, FERPA, you said a HIPAA is it's kosher, uh, or with how you set it up. What, what would anyone here know about with this relationship to FERPA because it is an outside application, right. but at the same time, it seems to be much more control. It's not like Twitter um, right. where everyone in the world could see it. It's right. limited to that team. Yeah. Uh, so what what do you what are your opinion or have you talked to anyone about how this relates to FERPA? I have not thought about that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that when I first set up the team, um, so I do have another team that I was using for something else that actually I never really caught on with that group. It was a group of graduate students, so maybe we're learning that graduate students are a special case that they're not quite like other graduates. Um, but I did first, my space lab team for my lab, I just set up that anybody with a wisc.edu address could join the team. And we had some person I don't know join the team. <laughs> and so I was kind of messed up, like, I don't know who you are, and if you really need to be here. But, and then as the administrator of the team, I was able to block and remove that person. Um, so you can set the team up differently in the first place. I just did that so I didn't have to then invite every new student every semester. So it was easier for them to add themselves. But there is that level of control in even the free version is that you can say that only somebody who has an invitation can join the group. Okay. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I don't. I haven't thought about. I mean, the kind of information that we put in here, I don't think 
would give me any concerns, partly because of the context in which we use it. Now, if I was using it for a class where students were asking me um, how many points they got out of the assignment or what their grade was going to be, like that would be a different level of information that maybe would have to be more carefully thought about. Yeah, I was just, I was just wondering. I, yeah. I, I know it was kind of a maybe unfair question, but yeah. I just wanted to know if you had any discussion about it. No, do you have any yet? Yeah. Let's uh, transition there. Actually, that was a nice segue. Speaking of being able to invite anybody who has a list at new address. There you go, yeah. um, so, in I think that Karen set up the um, group that you can all get to via the page here with your WISC address. So, if you go to the easy thing, you can join that group. Um, and later on, you'll get a chance to create your own group, create your own team. You can invite Lane to it, and then you can block and remove him later on. So, that'd be a fun exercise. And uh, so take some time and try this. And you know, let's dig around there for like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's give it 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to, to, to get our feet. Yeah, I, mean, oh, I downloaded that app. So do you want me to change this? I don't know if I have any. Oh, sure. Stay I'll, connected? I'll or? Put mine up. I don't know if I'll need to. I turned oh, the mic off. I muted it. I don't know if that was it. I just said I didn't want it. I just said I didn't want it. Address. 
Is that what you just said? Okay. The bad guy. Well, so I think at the end of the yeah, project, I just said that the bad guy is the bad guy. It is the bad guy. It is the bad guy. It's supposed to be ATF. Like, uh, I'm oh, sorry, that's the Yeah, 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 I'll try. Yeah, it's about half yeah. the content. Yeah. Yeah. And then I told you, yeah. don't get it really hard to have the same ones that you guys get. The ones that are just held down and working in. And that is a lot of He's inviting success. Yeah. Unless you might be a novice. Yeah. Oh, come on. You know what? I don't care. I don't care. She's definitely on our side. Yeah, and I just said, very much so. Right now, I'm seeing this piece as a Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I know, I have a pretty long, complicated password and I think I only got to medium. What do we have to do, like, put in our resume? <laughs> right? Okay, so the I learning is shown out. Special, special character, that's why. Explore Slack. Skip the tutorial. Or type something. Hello, I'm Slack. <laughs> So that was one of my questions. When you like, <coughs> do you ever need a slackation? Do you well, I uh, I mute it when I'm teaching. Okay. So that way I don't get all the notifications showing up while I'm lecturing. Good. Um, Seems like a good practice. So I have an easy do not disturb where you can just say, you know, for an hour, don't notify me every 20 minutes, or you can set a regular schedule where it won't notify you at specific times of the day. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And on the free one. Yeah. Nice. And you you can do it on the. I don't know if it's. Account specific or app specific? Like I don't know if you can have different settings for your phone app versus your desktop app. What? I just did the at everyone and it says you're about to notify 14 people in two time zones. <laughs> wow. That sounds. So if anybody has their laptop on a different time zone. Perhaps, yeah. That yeah. Was, yeah. I do have one of my team, one of my Lab members, we can't figure out who it thinks they're in a different time zone. But it notified me. Yes, it tells you. Are you sure why that matters? But I did just type at everyone. Yes, I do want to share it. These are our channels. Oh, we got general, learning, and random. Should the jokes go in So, what other apps have you integrated besides Trello? Trello is the only one that I've done the integration, but I've used links to Box and Google Drive. So, like in my other group, I didn't really catch on. Wow. It was a reading group, and so I would link to PDFs for people. Directly to the Nope. No, I just use the link. And we do people. Not a lot, but there's, I think there's a limit on the amount, the amount of data you can upload, because you can upload documents right to Slack. Yeah, um, but I think, five. yeah, and we haven't passed that. We don't do a lot of documents in it. Um, but that's probably another one of the limitations of the free version. Oh, there's some good jokes going on here. <laughs> Not to go to me. Has anyone started asking Slackbox some, some questions to just see where the limits of its well, there is also a, a remind function that I use, where you can tell it to remind somebody to do something at a particular time, and that's one of the Oh, buttons. so it'll pop up a notification on? Yeah, so if you go to Slack bot and you do, I don't remember which way the slash goes. You have to go there. Back to slash. So if you just go into the message and type a, is this a back slash? The slash. So, and so you can either, I want to do, send it to Karen, so do I do a slash, Karen? What? Or no, you start with slash or mine. Oh, look, I hit the slash. And yeah, it so all it tells you all the slash here. things you can do. Wow, so I can mute, yeah. I can message, I can... What does it mean? I, I don't know. I have no idea what that is. All right, so this isn't on our page, because I didn't learn about yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't um, but, but if you do slash remind, yeah, then it will remind somebody, either a person or a channel. Remind Karen. And then type in what you want to say. Did I type the... Yeah. Take out my trash. <laughs> to give you more coffee. Uh, trash. <laughs> there. How did I do that? And then. Oh, and then what and when. It wants to give it a when. So great. It gives me I a. Back say, like, to the view before you click on hashtag general writer. Ah, see. Well, it was showing me everything I typed. Yeah. I don't see how there it is. Showing. Oh. So where's the message? So I do use that for myself. Is I was going to ask you for general. Yeah, you can say remind me. Did hashtag general. Whoops. Um. No, you can just say me. Out. I don't know that you're you. Oh, so awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's 
So, oh. well, I think you don't need the admin. So I was like just like not in a channel. Can you get back to not being in a channel? I don't think so. Do you put on yourself. <laughs> well, I'll see if the random one made it. Nice. No, nope, that didn't go either. Hmm. Do you have to hit a button besides any I don't think so. <laughs> I see that you joined, but that's Do you all. have to be in the channel to post it in the channel? I don't know where else you would be, to be honest. Well, I started out with like... Yeah, yeah, I got a private message. Have you guys tried the private messages? <laughs> One of you has. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so Everybody's I started automatically out added to the channel, general and random channels. Like, okay. But beyond that, you have to add yourself to every uh -huh. other channel. Either yeah, I don't know where you can tag someone, and that will add them to the channel when you tag them, or you can add yourself. The, I guess it went to the ether that I Um, so as long as I have the window open, it doesn't give me the desktop notifications, but if I had the window closed, yeah. then the desktop notifications... So I didn't join. Oh, yeah, you're getting oh, notifications. Yeah. And I'm a, that's not, I was just saying, 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 I did, I did yes. get notifications. So I have that again. as well, but I have to be noticed that even in oh. the browser, it still does the desktop yeah. notifications. Yeah, you can... I'm in one of the channels now. Yeah. Before yeah. So you don't have to install anything, but you can... Um, that was weird. So it's 20 after. What do you guys think? Uh, so it's like group <laughs> chat. There's a learning curve, yes. It's like what chat? Group chat. I mean, what's the difference between this and WISC chat conference rooms? I've not used that, so I don't know. You're more familiar with WISC chat conference rooms, so. Well, it's basically us. a group chat. Like, they have one for. The uh, operations, so you can see what's you know outages, that kind of thing, um, and you can tag people. So like if you're, since there's a bunch of people in the room, if you uh -huh. want to direct it to them, you can do add you know their name. So that kind of highlights it. I don't know if they get like a ping on the other end. Yeah, the notification maybe was was was. Do you get notifications in this chat? Or do you have to have it open, or? Uh, I have it open all the time. <laughs> OK. Just in case. Um, yeah, I don't know if I get notified when they like put your name. Dan, you use this chat too, right? Not much anymore. I'm not, not with that uh, state of business, hey, uh, okay. which may or may not. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's many, many messaging platforms. Part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think I love you. so, you you're able to control who's in your chat, right? Yeah. So I can, as the owner of the team, I can add people to different channels, or I can remove them from channels, or I can remove them from the team. Right. I don't think WIS chat offers that. I mean, as long as you have the address, anybody can get in and okay. share it with somebody. Does chat have a phone client? Don't know. Well, you can use any chat client with with chat. Okay. Right. So, I mean, it's just a chat. It's not specialized like this. So you probably need their app to use this product, right? Um, Slack yeah. or the browser app. Yeah, if you want it on your phone. Yeah. If you want to use it, kind of like texting. Yeah, I don't think you can open up Slack and open it up on like. Or some of the other group chat right. groups that he's used. Um, okay, on the back, think of ways to use this in a class. Any ideas on is this? Is this I can see group or group projects for the students, small groups. I would worry that, and maybe even a, a like one of the things that you said was uh, it's the real time, but it's not just to you. Yeah. So that I can see, like if somebody has a question yeah. about an assignment, and even if it is, you know, they could ask it on just general chat yeah. channel or questions about assignment chat, it pops up on all the students' phones, and somebody else who yeah. is right there can be like, oh, do the check. Yeah. So I've used um, discussion boards in the UW that way when I teach my lecture class. They tell students if they have any questions about the class, you post it. They do not email me. Do not email me. That's, yeah. that's my mom. Nobody emailed me. Um, but 
they don't necessarily check it that much, and I don't know if it would be if they'd be more likely to use this in that way. Yeah. Um, but I do think one like for group projects, like you were saying, one thing I think would be nice about this is you could have a channel for each group that the group members are only in their own channel, but you as the admin get to see what's yeah. happening in all the channels, and so you can find if they've gone off track. <coughs> yeah. oh, maybe not the best idea for this project. And you can see the effort, as you said, of the graduate students. You can see the effort of your, your graduate assistants. Yeah. You can see the effort that each member of the group is putting in. Right. You can see who's posting and who's answering questions and who's yeah. not, necessarily. I am curious, Vanessa, how you said you're thinking about using it in your big class yeah. that you're going to be putting online. Yes. Is that next semester? No, it's not going to be. Till, so I applied for sabbatical next fall to make it online for the following spring. So it'll be spring. 2018. How do you envision it? I know we had just a, like a 30-second conversation yeah. where I said, go ask more. Yeah. <laughs> Who's in your department? <laughs> yeah, so um, that class is a combination of lecture and discussion yeah. section. Mm -hmm. And so the lectures will be videos online. So I could imagine using this mm -hmm. as you have a channel for like the lecture on Piaget. Yeah. If you have questions about it, post it here. And if other students know the answers, they can respond there. Or the TAs and I will check at regular intervals to make Respond. So that can take the place of questions you would ask in class. And then I could also imagine, like, kind of like we're saying with the group projects, that you could have channels dedicated to a group discussion. Um, so I'm, I'm doing, taking a lesson from Morton, doing a jigsaw method of reading research yeah. papers. And in the class I'm teaching right now, we're doing that in class where we sit and talk about it. Um, but you could also imagine using chat to do that. Where, and then you could, you know, put in a figure for the paper, you can add an image to the chat and then everybody can see it. Yeah. I, I just, I, there, we have a tool um, in that do it sort of supports called Piazza. And, yeah. Which is great, but it doesn't have channels. Right? Yeah. Have that group work. Yeah, so I've worked, next I actually time. tried Piazza a little bit yeah. in my lab and we generally found the user interface to not be very oh, yeah. intuitive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say that, but yes. I'll say it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and my students had a hard time. I mean, they kind of, whatever new thing you give them, you have to teach them how to use yeah. it anyway. But this seemed like it was closer <laughs> enough. <laughs> close enough to how they're used to communicating with each other by text that it was an easier adoption. They were more yeah. willing to post things than I've seen in other contexts. But that also might be specific to my needs that I want people posting. Everything that comes to mind. <laughs> And if I didn't want them posting questions all the time, then this might not be the best. And well, you point to a, a specific thing where, like, at, at our level of the university in general, we can provide like generalist tools, but right. we need something really specific for your needs. Yeah. <coughs> Did you? Uh, I didn't say that. That's me, not my job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you try uh, texting first before you went to this? Or? The issue with texting was like, like we had with email, not knowing who to send it to, and if they sent it to the wrong person, sending it to the right person, and making sure that um, everybody needed to know it knew it. And then also, I like being able to basically oversee conversations that other people are having. And so if two people are texting with each other, I don't know anything about it, but if they're talking in a Slack channel, I can come in at the end of the day and say, oh, they had this whole conversation about this problem, and I actually think there's a different solution we should try. And so that's one thing that I'd like to better than both email and texting, and even that in-person conversation, because I can't be there for most of the conversations like between the grad students and the undergrads. And so this is a better way for me to keep a history and have documentation of all the problems that are coming up and the solutions we're arriving at. And have you tried it in the classroom for like uh, back panel during the discussion, during, um, during the online course if you have a live portion? Like no, I haven't tried it at all in a class. Maybe I'll try it in my seminar I'm teaching this semester. Mm -hmm. um, I've already told them that we're doing lots of things experimentally, so maybe I'll try it there and see what they think about yeah. it. Um, I, think it I think it definitely has potential, especially over Twitter, for using the back channel during the class. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's much more control yeah. to it. Um, so I just want to do a quick question about the you tell them that you're going to be doing things experiment, you know, a lot of experimental things with them. Yeah. I think that's the best strategy yeah. with students because they're like, Ooh, we're, we're, we're trying something yeah. fun. This yeah. is new. Tell me what you like about it. Yeah. yeah. We don't. What can we do better? And then the, it, it makes them, it gives them agency. It makes them think that this is part of their class as yeah. well. Because that's, that's a huge part of uh, what makes them a good class. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, oh look, somebody posted, oh, we're almost out of time. Please make these labs better by filling out these um, evaluation forms. And if you haven't signed up already, if you haven't um, signed in already, please do. I think we got everybody there. Mike, you didn't sign in. But I signed in for you. Oh, no, you don't. Okay. Got you know that I was here. Yep, you do. And then we use these for like, the next sessions and such better. So and it, it helps us keep our doors open and keep open tables. Um, next week's way in Canvas, and that'll be kind of interesting. Ian Newlandhouse is coming from um, geography, talking about how he's using it. It's kind of neat. So thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Vanessa. Yeah.